Even my lifting is far from perfect and there are always things I can address, but it's about holding yourself accountable and identifying, you know, I could do this better. Well, team, we're in business today. And I say we're in business because we're doing something slightly different. And I kind of alluded to this in the last video. Is it's a slightly different style of original content video. And what I mean by that is that I'm not reviewing or analyzing or kind of reacting to anyone's content today. I'm actually going to be reacting to my own. I figured it'd be a bit different and be quite fun to do is I'm going to go through a, a full workout of mine, which is my upper body workout. And I'm going to explain what I'm doing why I'm doing it, and also what I could do better. That's what we're going to do today. I think it'll be quite fun, a bit different, a bit spicy, and we're going to find out if you enjoy it or maybe even if you tolerate it. But before we do so, we obviously need to do the bits and bobs that need to be done. If at any point throughout this video, this new style of video, you decide you like the video, then please let me know you like the video by liking the video. 1300 likes is the goal, so if you reach out, I would very much appreciate it. In addition to that, if you haven't already, please do consider clicking the red button down below to subscribe to the channel, and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. And if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, then please do consider to drop it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and I shall do so. Aligning with the theme of last week's hat, headwear, hat, kind of thing, shower cap, we're going to do the same this week. And it's purely for selfish reasons because these are actually incredibly comfortable. Would I wear it in the shower? Probably not. Would I rule it out entirely? Probably not as well. So obviously, like I said, this is going to be an upper body workout and it's a relatively balanced upper body workout in which there's one shoulder dominant movement, there's two chest dominant movements, there's two pulling dominant movements, so backs, being lats, upper back, etc. There's one bicep movement, there's one tricep movement. And like I said, we're going to go through each of them individually and I'm going to talk about it. Um, firstly, I do actually want to quickly apologise for this clip. I chose the wrong camera settings and it's made the quality get a bit iffy, but fear not, I did correct it for all the other clips so the quality will be much better. So here I'm doing a behind the back side raise. And the reason I'm doing it behind the back is that the peak tension is in its length and position. So at the bottom here, that's where most attention is. So like I said, I'm trying to work the shoulders in their lengthened position here. And I typically do this as my first movement. It's kind of off program, but I typically do it as more of like a, a warm up to an extent. Although yes, it's a working exercise and these are working sets I will be doing. I It doesn't take away or fatigue me for my following movements being like the primary pressing work that's to come. Therefore, it kind of puts my shoulders in a good position to then go into that pressing work, especially considering in the past I have had some shoulder niggles before. And what I would rather do is bring the arms a bit more forward so it's more 30 to 45 degrees in front of me. So I'm then raising the scapular plane, which tends to have a better line of force for those shoulders especially like I said the, the side lateral delts here but one of the reasons I do struggle with it is because despite my bum not being that big it does actually hit my bottom as you can see there so I need to adjust my setup slightly so I can better execute this movement and really milk it for what it's worth and you notice a trend throughout a lot of the movements I'm doing is that the rep range is actually relatively low and I'll explain why very shortly and obviously now we're moving on to the second movement which is a cable chest press variation and the cable chest press is fantastic I'm a big fan Typically, I do actually prefer plate-loaded chest pressing, but at this gym, I have access to two gyms. This is a gym I train at on this day. It doesn't have access to a plate-loaded machine, so I have to utilize things like the cable for the heavier pressing work, which is fine. Always ways to work around it, but this is also the gym I film the podcast now, which is quite fun. But the first thing you'll notice on this chest pressing variation, the angle of the machine is a bit odd. I know you're thinking, well, Harry, why is it so high and why are you pressing down, as you'll see very shortly? I'm doing that because I'm trying to place a bit more emphasis on the lower fiber division of the pec, which is the costal pec fiber. So obviously you've got clavicular being upper, sternal kind of being middle, and then costal being that lower pec region. Granted you can't isolate any division of the pec, you can merely place greater emphasis on certain divisions, and that's what I'm trying to do here. So initially I've got my friend Jason, you may remember him if you've watched the channel for a few years, he's the one of the trio members of TFNL from the earlier days. He's having to hold me down because unfortunately I will fly off the seat because it gets a bit heavy sometimes. But like I said, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to work the pecs in their shortened position. What I mean by that is the peak tension is it's at this lockout portion. I'm really trying to push my biceps together, almost trying to get my elbows to touch 
much to really further shorten that pec. And going through the movement, again, you'll notice quite low reps here. I think I was doing a set of nine on this one. But yeah, you know, it's a very good movement. I'm a big fan of this, provided you have support, because oftentimes you may find yourself lifting up, hence why you get support of a friend. So not only hold me down, but also to hold the bench down here, as you can see, otherwise the bench does do a little wheelie. And also this dumbbell behind to prevent it from sliding back into the rack, which it does, which actually then prevents you from doing the movement entirely. The really trying to emphasize that control. And so I'm controlling the eccentric, pausing at the stretch position there slightly, exploding on the concentrics. As I'm going down, I'm really exploding, trying to move that weight as fast as I can, trying to get my muscles to contract slower involuntarily to the point where I am too, if not close to failure, thus maximizing how many effective reps I'm getting per set here. As you can see, I, I probably could have squeezed one more out if I really sacrificed my soul to the devil. But again, I, I didn't quite want to hit true failure because I felt like my form would probably actually break down more than I would like. Regarding what I could do better, I definitely feel like I could probably extend my arms a tiny bit more. It's probably quite hard for you to see here, but there's definitely a little bend in my elbows here and I feel like I could maybe shorten the pecs a little bit further. I could maybe alter the line of force slightly as well, so I'm maybe pressing even more downwards, so bring this up slightly, just to see if I can maybe make it even better for its intended purpose. So next we are doing a iliac lat pull down. So by iliac lat pull down, you'll notice because I'm pulling from high to low and trying to get about, it's hard to see because I'm wearing a jumper, but about 120 or so degrees at the armpit here when I kind of stretch out. I'm trying to further bias the, the bottom portion of the lats being the iliac fibers. So obviously you've got iliac, lumbar, then thoracic. So thoracic being upper, lumbar being middle, iliac being lower. I'm trying to place a bit more emphasis on the iliac ones here. And you'll notice I'm turned away slightly. And that's because I'm trying to make this a bit more of a lengthened position dominant movement. So I'm trying to work the lats in their more lengthened position here. So there you see, I'm exaggerating the pause at the top for that stretch and coming down. The big thing you'll notice is because I'm focusing a bit more on the length and position. I'm not shortening the lat as much as I typically would. So I'm stopping maybe a bit shy. Cause like I said, the primary emphasis is that kind of length to mid range. You'll notice how I'm using my hand on the bench as additional support and to ensure I've got a stable base. I'm not locking out the elbow. I'm kind of going to the point where my elbow is kind of in line with my shoulders here, which is what we're really looking for. So, cause obviously I'm slightly leant back as well, but I'm, when I do lean back, I'm trying to maintain that neutral spine position. So I'm not arching back. So my upper arm is kind of aligning with the angle of my torso here, but Arguably, I probably could shorten the lat a little bit further. I feel like I'm actually getting a bit lazy here and missing out an, an extra inch or two of range of motion, which is something I need to work on. So I will address that going forward. And this is why I think it's really great to film things because you can see the things that you're doing that you can maybe improve on, but you also see the things that you're doing well as well. If you're able to, your gym allows it. It doesn't upset anyone in the background and you're comfortable doing so. Filming your workouts so you can critique and analyze your stuff. Because despite how much you may know, despite how much you may be able to analyze someone else's, we can always do better. We can always improve ourselves. It is rare that anyone ever has a perfect technique. And perfect technique looks different person to person. Based on our leverages, our biomechanics, your technique may look different to my technique, but doesn't mean either is right or wrong. It's just best for you or me. So next we moved on to an incline dumbbell press. I've got the, the incline bench up a couple of notches because now I'm trying to place a bit more emphasis on the clavicular fibers of the pec. So the upper pec fibers. And unfortunately, this is one of the movements I'm typically working higher reps on. I'm not out of choice because the dumbbells at this gym do only go to 40 kilos. Obviously, you just have to milk the reps instead of increasing the weight on this session. You'll notice the big thing here is look at the range of motion. I'm trying to get all the way down to a point where I'm, I'm tickling my chest and I'm pausing at the bottom because here I'm trying to work their pecs in their lengthened position. So the previous pressing movement was a bit more shortened position dominant. This one's going to be a bit more lengthened position dominant. And also when we think about shortened position, we think about metabolite accumulation. When we think about lengthened position, we think about stretch mediated hypertrophy. So I'm coming down. See, I'm not flaring my elbows. I'm tucking them in a bit. Arguably, I could actually probably tuck my elbows a little bit more and I feel like that may better align with the, the orientation of the pec fibers because they do typically run about 45 degrees. You see the big thing you'll notice here is I'm allowing my arms to travel across my body so I'm converging at the top and essentially that's what we want to look for is because obviously the pecs primary function is to bring the humerus across the body when I do a press if I if I just go out like that I'm actually not taking the pecs through their full range of motion whereas if I come across I'm converging so bring that upper arm across the body trying to maximize the range of motion that the pecs go through control down control down control down pause at the bottom explode come up bring the hands together but not allowing the dumbbells to touch just getting very close because I feel like if you touch you may bang and wobble and lose positioning slightly but when it comes to what I could do 
better. I feel like I could definitely twist my hands slightly to therefore allow me to tuck my elbows a tiny bit more. I don't think I have to, but I feel like I would probably benefit from doing so. I feel like at the time, I felt like this set was a lot harder than it actually was. Probably had more left in the tank than I would have liked, and I feel like I could have probably pushed that a bit further. Even my lifting is far from perfect, and there are always things I can address, but it's about holding yourself accountable and identifying, you know what, I could do this better, and I should do this better. So next we go on to our more of an upper back movement here. And although this is obviously considered a lat pull-down machine, because of the pronated grip, it's going to cause the elbows to flare slightly. You're going to get some thoracic lats, yeah, so the upper lats, but it's actually going to be more of like a, an upper back dominant pull-down here. Obviously, because when working the lats, we typically want to keep the elbow closer to the body, unable to do so with this movement. And again, I'm working the upper back in more of its shortened position because I'm pretty head onto the machine, and I, if I'm going to fail anywhere, I'm going to fail at the bottom, not at the top. The one thing I would say is I feel like I should probably lean back a bit more because my shoulder mobility is a bit pants. It's a bit useless due to many injuries I've had in the past from my like MMA and stuff like that. So I feel like if I leant back a bit more, I could actually get a better range of motion and bring that bar closer to my chest, which I should definitely do. That's something I definitely need to improve on is work on my shoulder mobility whilst also leaning back a bit more so I can improve the range of motion slightly and not miss out on those last two or three inches here. But yeah, that is largely a, a mobility issue with my mobility, like I said, is a bit pants and that's something I do need to address. And I will hold my hands up that I've been particularly lazy with my mobility work recently and it's beginning to show. So I need to address that and you can hold me accountable to that. So now we're going to a double rope push down because with the single rope, you can only really extend to about here and it kind of limits your range of motion in that shortened position. And that shortened position is there. So when the arms are locked out with a single rope, I would limit how far I can go and I may bang into my body with a double rope or a long rope. I can really extend behind my body a bit more, thus shortening the triceps even more, which is fantastic because what we really want to do because current research suggests that triceps don't actually benefit from stretch mediated hypertrophy so lengthened position dominant movements which typically be like overhead movements and stuff therefore i want to milk the shortened position as much as i can so being able to shorten it further through using a longer rope is definitely a big win so i'm leaning forward slightly i'm really retracting my shoulder blades because in retracting my shoulder blades that's going to encourage my elbows to stay behind the body or at least in line with the body to allow me to shorten the triceps further but what i think i could really improve on here is getting those shoulders back even further and not allowing my elbows to kind of shift forward as they are now as i begin to fatigue and nothing you notice you can't really see from this angle but i'm not extending like so i'm actually flaring my elbows slightly and coming out flaring out slightly will allow you to shorten the triceps a bit more effectively and will actually better line up with the triceps so when you are doing movements like this don't tuck your elbows in allow a slight flare just like when i was speaking about in sydney's video with the skull crushers don't worry about your elbows being like this allow that slight flare and now for the final movements we're just doing a very standard dumbbell curl and here i'm kind of working the biceps in their mid position as you can see i'm coming down could control fully locking out the elbows for stretching coming up coming up bring the elbows ever so slightly forward just to really kind of milk that contraction. And the big thing you notice here is at all times, my wrist is supinated. So my palms are facing in front of me and facing up. There's no twisting, there's nothing like that. When maximizing bicep recruitment, we wanna be in that supinated position. If we twist as we come up, we're not maximizing bicep recruitment until we're supinated. When we come down, we twist again. We're again, losing some recruitment on the way down. So if we stay supinated, although potentially harder, you maximize how involved your biceps are in the movement, which is what we really want here. I would arguably say the, the dumbbell curl is probably, my personal preference, my favorite bicep movement, and I could be probably actually one of the best bicep movements out there. Big thing is I'm trying to make sure I'm getting good control, bit of a squeeze and pause at the top, control, control down, lengthen at the bottom, really stretch that bicep out, steady tempo, squeezing my glutes, trying to keep as locked in as possible, try not to allow my core and everything to start wobbling when I begin to fatigue. As you see, I'm kind of reaching the failure point now. I think I've got one rep left in the tank here and I go for it. I come up, I come up, I come up, I push through. To be honest, arguably, I think what I could really do is where I've let myself down is intensity because I really wanted to take this movement to failure. It was my final movement of the day. Although this rep felt like failure to me, because it slowed a bit at the mid position, as expected, hence being a mid position dominant movement, I feel like I probably could have got one more out of that. You'll notice a lot of the movements I did, minus a few of them, is I was hovering around the lower rep range, kind of around the five to nine range. And that's typically because, I mean, I'm trialing something at the moment. So obviously we know the hypertrophy rep range for like growth is anywhere between five and 30 reps. But some people, Paul Carter included, have kind of presented the idea that you experience the same amount of growth whether you do five reps or 30 reps of a movement. But is there an argument that you could actually experience more fatigue doing more reps, therefore 
prioritizing the lower rep work, not only doing lower rep work, but maybe prioritizing lower rep work could potentially be more beneficial when it comes to fatigue management. So that's why I'm testing at the moment to trying to keep in the, the five to nine rep range for a lot of things to so that lower end of the spectrum. But I am also tickling into the, the 12s of 15s and sometimes the 20s and other movements here and there for some of my work, just so I'm not neglecting rep ranges, just so I'm not potentially neglecting certain fibers that may get most recruitment out of higher reps. So many things along those lines. Just to make sure I, I, I'm not neglecting anything, but I'm trying to prioritize what could potentially minimize fatigue whilst yielding a comparable growth stimulus. It's a bit of a test I'm running on myself, a bit of trial and error to see how, how I get on with it. So far, it's okay. There are certain movements that typically wouldn't go low rep on because I feel like for me personally, the joint loading might be a bit excessive, but that's just because of me and my limitations. But yeah, so that is it. That is the video. Let me know how you found the video because like I said, it's a bit of a different style of video. I wasn't sure how it would go, but hopefully you've managed to learn something or take something from it. Hopefully you've identified what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and also what I could do better. And maybe you might notice some similarities that you could implement to help improve your training as well but yeah if you like this style of video i can certainly do it more often just let me know in the comment section below now we're going to quickly crack on with comment question of the week when i do glute biased bulgarians reverse lunges leg press i feel my hamstrings working really intensely but not as intense feeling in the glutes does this mean my hamstrings are taking over for my glutes also is there a merch drop in our future so when doing like leg press and stuff your hamstrings won't be working well that kind of burn that you're likely experiencing could actually be an adductor muscle so i kind of spoke about this when i spoke about the hamstring like growth guide video and I misspoke in that video where I spoke about there being a muscle underneath the hamstrings that stabilizes the pelvis I apologize I made a mistake I was wrong there is actually a, a, an adductor muscle I want to say it's the adductor magnus that kind of runs down and almost towards the back of the leg and they call it almost like the hamstring division of the adductors therefore that burn you may feel may not actually be your hamstrings but it may actually be an adductor muscle that is burning and we also know that sensation doesn't necessarily correlate to effectiveness so just because it's burning doesn't mean it's actually working more effectively just because it's also not burning doesn't necessarily mean it's not working also merch drop i'm working on it i'm hoping for november but i'm having a bit of issues finding a right supplier and everything but i promise i am working on it and i'm putting some good time into it as well i'll make sure it's good top quality source that is it that is a video like i said at the start of the video if you like the video then please let me know you like the video by liking the video 1300 likes is the goal so if we reach that would be bloody splendid i would very much appreciate it if you haven't already please do consider clicking the red button down below to subscribe to the channel and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when i upload every week twice a week and if you to have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video then please do consider drop it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and i shall do so thank you for tolerating me thank you for tolerating my lengthy and probably quite boring workout footage and thank you for tolerating the video